Hey you guys, so um, originally this screencast was going to be about aerobic respiration, but I'm actually shifting things because we, um, we didn't complete as much as I wanted to on Thursday. So I'm going to make this screencast about what it was that I was going to cover on Thursday at the end of class. So um, first things first, this is the diagram that you guys created in class on Wednesday after the lab period, after we set up the lab. And I want to point out a couple things that I need for you to add that I noticed were missing when I went back and, and reviewed these uh, the notes. Um, so the first thing is, please add oxidation in this box right here because those um, that glucose molecule, when it splits into two, undergoes an oxidation, which means that it's going to lose electrons. Now, that's a really important thing because you don't lose electrons unless something's willing to take them. And if you look here, over on this side, we can see that there's a reduction going on, which I refer to as being the key. And so that's, that's an important element here because that means the agent of oxidation is NAD+, meaning that's the thing that's going to cause the oxidation of the glucose. And the thing that's the agent of, ox of reduction for, the, for making NADH is um, the glucose as well. So they sort of are each other's agents. And another important thing that you need to add here is notice that I put in a proton and electron going into the process of making the NADH. The NAD plus doesn't just sort of become NADH without adding something to it, and I didn't note what that was. So here we have that the things that it takes are the protons and the electrons. Now, where does it get those pro protons and electrons? It takes them right from these dudes, okay? From these molecules that are busted in half uh, when they, that, that used to be glucose molecules. So what's important to understand sort of in the, the big picture about what's going on here, without the NAD+, you wouldn't be able to cause the oxidation of these molecules, which means that they wouldn't release their electrons. And if they don't release their electrons, they're not going to add on these phosphates, and they're not then going to release those phosphates to make ATP, which is the fundamental thing that we're trying to do here, and then turn into the pyruvate. So again, this process of oxidation and reduction is vital for making ATP. Okay. Um, so let's move forward now. We're going to focus in on what happens after you make these pyruvates that we have going on here. What do you do with those things? And this moves us into the second part of anaerobic respiration, which are the two fermentation pathways. Okay, so uh, I left this for a little bit, so <laughs> as usual. I don't remember where I left off. I think I'm talking about the different fermentation pathways. So let's begin with one of the two. We have lactate fermentation and we have also alcoholic fermentation. I'm going to talk about lactate fermentation first. And the number one thing that you got to make sure that you get into your brain is that fermentation does not make any more ATP. That's not the point of fermentation. The point of fermentation is to regenerate this stuff right here. Remember I said that this was the key, NAD+. And if you don't have NAD+, you're not going to be able to have all this stuff happen, which means you're not going to be able to produce the ATP. So NAD+, is very important. But don't forget that in this process of glycolysis, you produced NADH, which is not the same thing as NAD+. NADH cannot do the cannot go in there and inspire the oxidation of the glucose. Okay, so the whole point of fermentation is to regenerate NAD+, so that you can continue this glycolytic glycolytic pathway. So let's see how that works. You're going to take pyruvates, the two pyruvates that we saw come out at the end of this uh, glycolytic pathway or glycolysis. And these two pyruvates are going to be fed into our fermentation box. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a box here, and I'm going to write fermentation. So these two pyruvates are going to be dumped into this fermentation box. Let's see. 
Boom, there we go. And they're going to undergo a reduction reaction. And if you recall, a reduction reaction means that they gain an electron. So, in fact, they gain two electrons and they gain a couple of protons as well. So that means that we need to have a source of electrons and protons. Now, don't forget, moments ago, I needed to add electrons and protons to the NAD plus to make NADH. So I don't think you'd be too shocked to find out that if I bring in two NADHs to this, they can be my source of protons and electrons. Okay, so my two NADHs that were the result of glycolysis from above drop off protons and electrons to these uh, two things that were pyruvates, but now as a result of going through this reduction, they no longer are pyruvates, they become lactates. And as a result of becoming lactates, they slightly change because they have protons and electrons associated with them. Now you should know that lactate inside the body, uh, because it's a slightly acidic uh, place inside the body, can turn into lactic acid, which is why we talk about it as sometimes being the lactic acid fermentation pathway, not just the lactate pathway. All right, so let me make my two um, lactates. Okay, so there are my two lactates. Notice they're not black anymore because they've slightly changed away from being the pyruvates since they had electrons and protons associated with them. Now, the NADH, obviously, if it gives up its electrons, then it's going to undergo an oxidation reaction. And when it does that, lo and behold, we produce what we were looking for, the NAD pluses. And again, don't forget that this is the fundamental goal of the process of fermentation, because those NAD pluses then travel back up to glycolysis, where they will be used in the process of making more ATP. Okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the other type of fermentation that's going to be going on here. So don't forget that it was lactate fermentation. Now we're going to look at alcoholic fermentation. So even though alcoholic fermentation will prove to be a little bit more complex, the same fundamental goal is still in place here, which is to produce NAD pluses that can go return back to glycolysis. We are going to start with our same two pyruvates that came out of glycolysis. Again, you don't do lactate fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. Depending on what kind of organism you are, you're going to do one or the other. So this would have to be in a completely different organism undergoing alcoholic fermentation. So we have our pyruvates, and we're going to go ahead and make another one of these fermentation boxes, but this is going to look a little different. Okay, this looks different because it has sort of an hourglass shape to it, since there are going to be two distinct reactions that occur in the alcoholic fermentation pathway. I'm going to go ahead and write fermentation in this box as well. Okay, so fermentation is going to happen because we are going to take these two pyruvates, and we're going to dump them into our fermentation box, and then we're going to, so let me just go ahead and paste those guys in there. Now they're not pyruvates, but uh, let me go ahead and erase the words pyruvate there. And, um, well actually they are pyruvates, but they're going to change into something very quickly. And then we're going to have waters that get introduced to this fermentation process. So I'm going to bring in two water molecules to connect to these pyruvates. And as a result of that process, when the waters go in, a whole bunch of enzymes are responsible for this, um, things get rearranged, things get broken apart, and you end up producing two carbon dioxides, which is going to be in the form of a gas. The, the water is going to be in the form of a liquid. And so actually, we should show these things. Let me um, go ahead and add my two electrons here. Give me a second. I didn't mean electrons, I mean carbon molecules. Hold on. Okay, so there I have my two carbon dioxide molecules that um, snapped off of my pyruvates. But of course, if I lost two carbons, then I'm going to have a different situation, um, and that the, what ends up here is going to be two two carbon molecules. And there's a name for these new two carbon uh, molecules. These are called acetaldehydes. Now these two acetaldehydes 
are primed for something. They're all sort of uncomfortable and ready to gain electrons. Just like we saw over here that this process, the um, um, pyruvates needed to gain electrons. Well, the acetaldehydes are also going to gain electrons, and in fact they're going to gain it from the exact same pals. It's going to be our NADH, which gives up the electrons, and also a couple of protons as well. And as a result of giving up these things, then we have a reduction reaction. And that reduction reaction, it doesn't change the number of carbons, but because you change around the number of electrons and protons, you're going to have a different compound that results. And these guys are no longer acid aldehydes. These are now ethanol molecules. So I'm going to produce two ethanols. And of course, since my NADH over here, right, gave up an electron and a proton, or each of them gave up an electron and a proton, we no longer have NADH. We have what exactly we were looking for, which were, you can probably have predicted at this point, we're going to produce two NAD pluses. And it's those NAD pluses which are going to be so vital because, once again, they're the things that are going to go up here and be involved in the process of making our 4 ATP. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the two fermentation pathways, one resulting in the production of CO2 and ethanol, which is the alcoholic fermentation process, and one that's involved in the process, uh, that involves the process of making lactic acid or lactate. Now, one last thing that I want to pass on to you guys is that lactate fermentation is something that's done by us, right? So here we have an Asian guy with a bow tie and glasses because he does lactic acid fermentation when he sprints around at high speed. Here he is holding on to his iPad and also holding on to his, uh, his little orange stylus. Um, however, human beings and our mammals in general aren't the only ones. Uh, we also have bacteria. So you know, these little dots right here represent bacteria. So bacteria can also undergo, well, that looks like it doesn't even say, that says Bactoia or something, bacteria, you know what it says, uh, and this is mammals. Um, a really cool way in which you know that bacteria under uh, do lactic acid fermentation is in the making of kimchi. Um, because uh, the bacteria will start to degrade the cabbage and give it sort of a, an acidic... Hey, everybody okay? Oh, it's mama. Okay. Uh, and then alcoholic fermentation is also done by a couple things that are fairly familiar. We have here, this is a yeast cell, just like the dudes that we worked with this past couple of days. Um, however, the same fellas, the bacteria, can also be... Um, alcoholic fermenters. And in fact, what's cool about this is that most wine is going to be the result of bacterial fermentation, as well as some yeast fermentation, but a lot, a lot of it is bacterial fermentation. All right, that's it. See you guys tomorrow. No, I won't see you tomorrow. Yes, I guess I will if you're watching this on Sunday. Bye.